Happy Serious Sunday, people of the internet. How are you doing today? I'm Luke, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about VR. That's a virtual reality technology. Over the last, I want to say, maybe a year and a half, two years at this point perhaps, uh, we've really seen a big jump in VR. Uh, at one point, when the Oculus Rift was announced maybe two years ago, give or take, with uh, E3, and perhaps a little bit before that. I haven't really done my research on this one. It's, uh, yeah, a lot of people, I think, were fairly skeptical about the whole idea of reviving this whole VR thing, since it's uh, not the, exactly the first time that it's been put on the table as something that we might try to do. VR technology has been around for a very long time at this point, but unfortunately, up to date, um, the technology has never really been perfect. It's it's never quite been good enough to be some kind of a commercially viable product. But over the last two years, as they've continued to really refine and push towards a more community-driven renaissance of VR gaming, the technology has jumped by leaps and bounds, and we're finally seeing the whole thing have this enormous shift to actual commercial viability that is pretty amazing to me. Uh, I understand that a lot of people uh, who are in the sort of general gaming space haven't probably had the opportunity to try modern VR or even really old VR at this point, but it's... I've, I've been lucky enough to have the opportunity to really experience it a few times. Uh, when I was working on Elite Dangerous, of course, it was kind of the poster boy for VR for a little while. It kind of seems to have disappeared off of Oculus's website, and although people still do talk about it quite a bit, it's still not compatible with the Vive, and yeah, it's it's a very, you know, it's kind of faded a little bit in people's uh, minds. But that said, when I was working on it, we had an Oculus in the office, and so I was able to actually check out the game in VR, and it was an amazing experience. I've also had the opportunity to have a DK2 in my house for about a week at one point, a year ago or so. And uh, actually more than that, a year and a half maybe. But anyway, doesn't that doesn't really matter. Um, I got to use it and it was amazing. Um, and so I've been one of the lucky ones who's had an opportunity to actually try this a few times. And also fairly recently, one of my co-workers, a young guy with a little bit more disposable income and fewer uh, responsibilities perhaps than me, uh, actually sprung to get himself a Vive and was kind enough to bring it into the office so everybody uh, in my studio could play it. And holy shit. I mean, like, it just keeps getting better. For anybody who hasn't had the chance to use VR, I know that when people talk about it, probably... Uh, skepticism is natural, right? It sounds just like a lot of hype and hyperbole, right, about this technology that can't really be that transcendental of an experience. But I'd like you to imagine, if you would, putting on a pair of goggles that once you've done so, and earphones, you are instantly in a different space. You, you're, the movement of your head moves you around in space, and your eyes can look left and right and up and down, and the visuals that are around your head are encompassing enough that you don't feel as though you are looking at a screen, but just at space in front of you. Just imagine that experience alone, right? Being in a room, an empty room even. That's where it starts. And suddenly with something like the Vive, you have 
a, a method by which you can interact with and manipulate your environment through, granted, fairly crude uh, hand, hand machines, controllers, basically. But that brings the immersion level even higher to the point where, and again, I know that just saying this, saying these words isn't going to mean a whole lot to people, but you are in a different space and you have these guns in your hands or a bow and arrow in your hands and you understand that it's a game. There's, there's no point when you're playing virtual reality. I think that you'd really lose sight of the fact that you are in a digitally created space but you can really experience this thing that was essentially unexperienceable before you can look at what happens in a virtual reality game on a screen that's not difficult but when you get the opportunity to really be there, as it were, it's a very, very different thing. Yeah, it's very difficult to explain, and I don't think that people who haven't had the opportunity to use VR are really going to, you know, grasp exactly how that all really feels. There's just no way to know until you've actually done it. But uh, on the days that, uh, or on the day that my uh, coworker did bring in their Vive, um, there were a, there were a number of people in my studio who had never used VR before, obviously, and were understandably skeptical about this new technology. Uh, and not a single one of them that tried it walked away with that skepticism still intact. It is it is a game changer, really. Like, um, once you've tried it for the first time, you'll want to do it more, <laughs> is really what it, about what it boils down to. I was playing this game called uh, Space Pirate Trainer, I believe, um, where it's a very, very simple premise. You are standing in a circle and you have a gun in either hand, which is the Vive controllers, and there are probes of sorts that come up over the edge of this platform that you're standing on, and they shoot at you, and you shoot back. That's it. Uh, and since it's tracking you in real space, you have the ability to dodge out of the way of incoming projectiles, and you can shoot back with these guns that have various settings that you can use. And despite the fact that that is so simple, I mean, something flying around you and shooting at you and you shooting back and then you basically just accumulating points by doing this. That's the end of it. That is the whole game. But it is astounding, right? Like these very simple experiences that if you had to, if you were selling that or attempting to sell that on a screen, on a flat screen, you know, maybe 22 inch, 1080p computer monitor, it would be a very lightweight experience. And I'm not saying that the game isn't lightweight, so to speak. It's, it's a very simple game. There's not a lot going on in it. But the fact that instead of being controlling WASDA and your mouse and, you know, clicking to shoot, uh, you're actually there. You're shooting these laser guns with your hands, and you've got bullets coming at you that you can step out of the way of and feel totally badass doing it. These are the kinds of, of experiences that VR has actually managed to offer to us now. Sadly, unfortunately, VR technology is still new, still fairly experimental, and still very expensive. Uh, I personally do not see myself having the disposable income uh, without perhaps being murdered by my fiancé <laughs> to pick one up myself. But 
uh, over time, give it another year, two years, three years, and they're just going to become less expensive. Right now the Vive is on a multiple week waiting period type thing because they're going so quickly. And this is technology that they're just going to be updating as we go. And hopefully the technology will become less expensive to manufacture and also to sell, hopefully, and to buy as a consumer. And when that day comes, oh boy, if you thought that people were missing meals playing World of Warcraft, oh man, I don't even know what's going to happen once we have a actual virtual reality that is easily accessible by the layman. Because at $1,200, $1,500 Canadian right now, what it is, um, I don't know what that translates into the, in US dollars, about $1,000 probably. It is still something that only the most devout technophiles are going to have their hands on at this point. But it's not that far off. And so my point is, or what I kind of wanted to say today, is uh, if you're a skeptic about VR, I want you to, if you have the opportunity at a store that sells them or anything like that, even if there's a line, give it a shot. I think you'll become a convert as well. Or maybe wait until it's a little less expensive if you're the kind of person who, once you get a taste of something and you absolutely have to taste again, you'll ruin yourself financially for doing it. Don't do that. But I am willing to say that even the most you know, skeptical people of this technology will still, at the very least, be very interested once you get the opportunity to actually give it a shot. So, yeah, see if you get the opportunity. If you know somebody who has a Vive, then you'll be super lucky because you can probably get the opportunity to try it. It's one of those things that people want to share with other people. I loved, oh man, when, when we had the Vive, I had the opportunity to use VR before. I was doing Oculus to play on Elite. Uh, and fortunately, I also had my you know throttle and stick, so it was a very cool experience because it did once again feel like you had that one to one movement experience now with the vives controllers, you can do something like that, but yeah, watching people I have so much fun watching people have their first v r experiences it just puts a, a huge grin on my a stu- huge stupid grin on my face right to see people just oh, in the bewilderment of that experience. And it's just gonna be getting better, right? Like, it's still imperfect. So the the movement can be a little bit jerky at times and it's very much gated by your tech, by your computer's abilities right now, but it, yeah, it's on the way, it's coming. And that's it for me today. Um, Yeah, VR, it's really cool, it's coming. And it's just going to get bigger, I think, at this point. Um, I think that those of you who think it's still a fad, if you get the chance to try it, you'll realize that there's a lot more to it than that. And that's it for me for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, or whatever day of the week you happen to be watching this video on, and that you also have a wonderful week upcoming hope to see you tomorrow hope to see you any other given day but for now have a good one and take care